Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I started doing a series a little while ago that was somewhat popular, but I wasn't really satisfied with the way that it turned out. And that was my series on slide rules. Now the problem that we ran into is it's very difficult to see the numbers well on a slide rule when you're trying to photograph it. And as a result, it can get a little bit confusing. Now a slide rule is a mechanical computer. It's much like a handheld calculator that doesn't require batteries. It's very simple to use. It's something that I learned in school when I was in middle school, but then electronic calculators came by about 1973 and the slide rules just kind of went by the wayside. But they're good to know and I think they should still be taught because they give you an understanding of the relationship between numbers and an intimacy in math that you don't get with a calculator. You can get the wrong answer with a calculator at light speed even though you have no idea that it's wrong or why. With a slide rule you have to keep track of your decimal places. You have to understand the relationship between the scales and you just need a much better knowledge of math and I think it's a great way to learn it. So let's go over a couple of slide rules. First of all, this is my picket. This is what's called a standard slide rule. It's 10 inches long. It's got a number of engineering scales on it. It's used for multiplication, divisions, and trigonometry, sines, cosines, tangents, etc. Now I find them very handy because they're fun to use and they give you, they've got a nice tactile sense to them and they give you good answers. Good out to about three significant digits. And if that's all the precision that you need, these work really nice. As a matter of fact, you can actually even get a small one like this. This is called a pocket rule. So even though this is extremely handy to carry around with you, the problem that you run into it is the numbers are very small and the precision is probably two significant digits at best. I have to wear my glasses in order to use this. Come to think of it, I gotta wear my glasses to use this too. Now, I got in trouble for making fun of the English driving on the left side of the road the other day. That probably was a little too far. So we're going to go make fun of the Germans today. Now the picket is an American slide rule. Uh, K and E's are American slide rules. They're rather unimaginative. The Germans make beautiful slide rules with good examples being uh, Faber and the one that I have today, which is a Aristo Studio Model 1068. Now with slide rules, size matters. It has to do with your ability to read the numbers and the amount of precision that you can get. Well, thanks to the generous support of the viewers of this channel through our PayPal, Patreon, and memberships, I was able to find a rather rare slide rule for use on this channel. And that is the Aristo Studio Model 1068. This is a 20 inch slide rule. And as you can tell, it's twice the size of a normal slide rule. The thing that I like about it is that it is at least three to four significant digits. The numbers are very easy to read and it's a very nice slide rule. It's a little different than the others because it comes with these little stands on the end because even just holding the slide rule and supporting the weight makes the slide stick. You literally have to hold it from the ends and then it slides very nicely, see? So, Let's clear off the whole desk and bring this over there and start learning a little bit about the scales on a slide rule, which is the topic of today's video. Well, when you get a slide rule, most of the time you'll get a book of some sort that will come along with it to tell you how to use it. This is from my picket slide rule, the yellow one. Now, we'll go ahead and introduce the scale by looking at the two basic scales that we'll start with using my grandfather's slide rule. The first scales that we want to have a look at are the C and the D scale. These are the basic logarithmic scales of the slide rule. These are like two rulers being put together to add, add things. And that's the way the slide rules work, is that they add things and subtract things. And those things are logarithms. So by adding, you can multiply, and by subtracting, you can divide. And the operation of a slide rule is pretty simple. So for example, if you want to multiply 2 by 3, what you do is you set the index on the C over the number you want to do something to, and that is the 2. And then you read out on the C to the number that is doing something to it and read your answer right underneath it. So a good rule of thumb to get started is whatever number you're doing something to is on the body of the slide rule. 
you put the index over that number. And then what you do to it is on the slide. So for example, if we want to multiply 2 by 2, we put the index over the 2. We read out to 2, and then we read down to the answer, which is 4. Likewise, 3 is 6. Now let's go ahead and give you an example of why the size of the slide rule makes a difference in precision. So we'll do the same operation on three different slide rules. On the pocket picket here, we're going to multiply 2 by pi. So we go out there to pi. Then we'll bring the index on the other side underneath our cursor and our hairline. And then we will multiply it by 39.6, which is the radius of the Earth. And as you see, the answer would be 21, 2, 3, 4, 000, and then it's just shy of 25. But that's about the best that we can do with this particular slide rule. Now we'll do the same operation on my grandfather's slide rule, which is a 10 inch slide rule. So we'll bring the index out to the two. We will multiply that by pi, and it's not marked on his, but it's 3.14 roughly. Then we'll bring the index back underneath the hairline, and then we'll go this would be 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and about 30, 39, 60 is what we've got that marked at. And as you can see, we've got 2, 24, and it looks like about 28 because that's the fourth one there. Now, we'll go ahead and do the same operation on the big slide rule. Here's the Aristo Studio 1068. I got this from a gentleman in Bulgaria, by the way, and it cost about as much as a reasonably priced scientific calculator. So, any support of the channel is much appreciated. So, what we did is we put the index over the 2. Then we're going to come out here and we're going to multiply it by pi, which is right there. Then we're going to bring the index back. So we've got a 1 on it. Like so. And then we're going to come down here. And we're going to read off. There's 3,500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 60 is right there. And that gives us an answer of 24,000. Looks like just shy, between eight and a half and nine. And as you know, the radius of the Earth is 24,901 miles. Get that right in the center. But that's the degree of precision that you can get with a larger scale. Now the next scale that I want to address is this one right here. This is called the CI scale. Now what CI scale stands for is the inverse of the C scale. The C scale starts with one here and it works its way up to one again which represents 10. The CI scale starts with one here and then runs backwards. That's one of the reasons that it's in red. It's a backwards scale. Because if you look at this 4 right here, that's not really 4. What that is, is 1 over 4. So, let's see how we would use this. Okay, so say we want to multiply 4 by 6. So we mark our 4 on our D scale. That's the, the number that we're doing something to. And what are we doing to it? We're multiplying it by 6. And in order to do that, we have to bring an index out. So, there's the index right there. However, if we want to get to 6, it's all the way out here. It's off the scale. We can't do anything with that. So option number 2. We'll go back and we'll bring the index on the other side over to the 4. 
And then what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll read the six. And there's our answer. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Pretty simple. However, every time you move the scale and the distance that you move the scale tends to add inaccuracy. So let's do something a little different. A little trick that we can use to solve this problem, we need to learn about the second operation and that is division. So for example, say we want to divide four by two. We'll take the number that we're doing something to, which is four, and that's on the body of the slide rule. And then we'll take the number that we're doing to it, and that is two, and we'll put that directly above it. Then we go back to the index, and we read our answer. Essentially what we're doing is we're subtracting rather than adding. Uh, multiplication is adding, division is subtracting. So now we put two over here, read back to the index, and our answer is right underneath it, which is two. Just to show you that that works, let's go out here to six, and then we'll divide that by two. And as you can see, our answer is right here, three. Now, let's take advantage of this and see if we can find a better way to multiply four by six. So, we know the CI scale is 1 over the number that's listed. So here is 6. So essentially, by putting the 6 over the 4, we are dividing the 4 by 1 over 6, because the 6 here represents 1 over 6. And then we go back and we read our answer, 24. See, there's the 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. You have to keep track of your decimal places with a slide rule. So if we want to multiply 4 by 6, we ran into the problem of being off the scale here. We solve that by changing which index we used and got our answer that way. And then the other way that we did it was we divided by the reciprocal 1 over 6. And once again, we got it that way. There's another thing that we can do. We have some scales up here that are called CF and DF. These stand for folded scales. Notice that they start with pi. So where do those come from? First, the C and the D scale are, are, are the same type of scale. They're just put next to each other. Likewise, CF and DF are also the same scale. They're just put next to each other. Then we come out here. until we have pi over the index here, okay? If we were to cut the slide off right here, take this side of the slide and put it over here or fold it backwards, we will get a folded scale. So as you see, pi is here, pi is here. One is here, one is here. We can use these the same way we use the CD scale and we can use them together. Let me show you how to do that. First of all, let's multiply 4 by 6. So there's our 4, and we want to multiply it by 6. If we take our slide and we move the 1, or the index, of the CF scale directly over it, and then we move it down to 6, like any other operation, what do we get? There's 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4. We read it right off the D scale like we did on the other. The key to it is where do you put the index? With a regular C scale, we, the index is all the way on the end. With a C folded scale, the index is in the middle. On this particular slide rule, just as we had the inverted C scale here, we also have an inverted C folded scale. And it's used exactly the same way. So let's go ahead and try that one out. Okay, so there's four, the number that we're working with. Now let's go up here to the C inverted scale and see where six is, right here. So we're cooking with gas now. Where do we read it? Well, we read it from the index on the CF scale. Now these take a little bit of practice to use. 
And the reason that they're there is as you are doing your operations, one scale may be more advantageous for you to use and involve less sliding than the other. So one good way to practice this is if you have a slide rule with a C and a D and a C and a D folded scale, practice using them interchangeably and then throw in a CI scale or a CI folded scale as well. Just try and do operations in different ways. So for example, with our earlier operation, so let's do the smaller one here for a second. So this will give us more of a picture of what we're doing. So once again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply 2 by pi. Okay, so we put the index on the folded scale under our hairline. And then we just read down to 39.59, which is about right there. And that gives us our answer, just a hair shy of 25,000. Now we can do it again using the CI scale. So there's 2 pi. And then we're going to divide that by 1 over 39.59, which will be right here, about right there. Then we're going to go back here to the index and find our answer. See? A little bit more there. A little bit off. That's just a hair over 25,000. Now today that we had a look at the C and the D scale, we had a look at the folded C and D scale, and we also had a look at the CI scale, the inverted C scale. Now, in our next episode, we're going to talk about three more scales. And they're found on the other side of this particular slide rule. So here's our C and D scale. Here we have an A and a B scale. And we also have a K scale down at the bottom. Now I want to draw your attention to something real quick. The C and the D scale go from 1 all the way up to 10. The A and the B scale go from 1 to 10 to 100. See how there are two complete scales here? Basically, it's half the size of the C and the D scale. And finally, the K scale goes from 1 to 10 to 100 to 1,000. There are three complete C scales here. What they're used for is square roots and cube roots. So for example, if you go to 4 on the A scale, you read its square root, which is 2, below it. If you're at 36 on the A and the B scale, its square root is right underneath it on the C and the D scale at 6. If we go to 8 on the K scale, we read right up to its cube root, which is 2. Well, that's about it for our first episode. What I want to do now is just touch briefly on how a slide rule works. It uses something called logarithms. Now, the logarithm is if you look at two numbers, say 50 and 30. 50 is 10 raised to the power of 1.699. 30 is 10 to the power of 1.477. Okay? Now you take the 10, which is the base, and that's log, that becomes the base of the logarithm, log 10. Then you put the number in, and the logarithm is the exponent. If you add these exponents together and come up with this, 3.176, that's the logarithm of 1499.68, or the four significant digits, 1500. So what the slide rule does is it reverts multiplication to addition and division to subtraction using logarithms. Now we talked about four sets of scales in this episode. The basic scale is the CD scale. That's the logarithm of x, whatever, whatever you see on the slide rule. Related to that are the C-folded and D-folded scales, and those also are related to X. Then we talked about the CI scale, which is the inverted C scale. That's the logarithm of 1 over X, and the CI-DI folded scales are also related to 1 over X. Now at the very end, we talked about the AB scale and the K scale, and that'll be the subject of our next episode. However, just as we can have logarithms of whole numbers, we can also have a logarithm of a square root. 
The logarithm of the square root of 10 is 10 to the power of 1 half. To make that a log, it's 1 half log 10 of 10. So that's why, that's why the AB scale, which deals with x squared, is half the size of the CD scale. Likewise, the K scale, which is the cube roots and cubes, is one third the size of the CD scale. So that's enough theory for right now. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you could clearly see the slide rule. I wanted to make sure that everybody could see this very well. You know, these things are kind of fun. They're portable, they're very handy, they don't require batteries, and you have to understand the numbers in order to use them. This is a great way to learn practical math. So until our next episode, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you very much for stopping by, and once again, thank you for the support of this channel and for Bob the Science Guy. The support of this channel has allowed me to get the A12 bubble sextant. It's allowed me to get that Aristo Studio 1068, and it's got a fuller calculator on the way. So we've got some exciting things coming up with the channel, and I hope that you'll tune in. So until next time, this is Bob the Science Guy. Take care, guys.